it's Melissa. In this video, I am going to show you how to print out your first transfer with your Prestige A3 Plus DTF printer. So we're gonna go from start to finish, from loading the, the sh film to making sure that CAD link, the, the uh, RIP software is all set up correctly, okay? So you, there are multiple different size sheets. This can take A3, A4, a, you know, and um, so I'm using here an eight and a half by 11 or eight, uh, four. So there's a small little lever in here that you can compress to move back and forth. And it does kind of notch. So just make sure it's on the correct spot to hold the um, size sheet that you're using, film sheet that you're using. So as I said, I'm using A4. You wanna make it, you wanna put the sheet in so that the mat side, the like, um, not the glossy side, the matte or the rougher side is facing out, okay? That's the side it's gonna print on. So it's gonna go through the printer and it's gonna print and land on this tray here. All right, so now this is all set up. We are connected to the computer and now we're gonna go into the software and make sure that our ports and our all our selections are set up. So if you've already printed, then you don't probably need to set a whole lot of this up. This is definitely for the first print to get you established and make sure your settings are all correct. But now once you have the software launched, you do need to make a couple of adjustments. So first thing that you wanna check is in the Q menu, which is up here um, along the top toolbar. So click Manage Cues, and you want to make sure that the port is displaying as Epson stylus, okay? I'm not sure why that is the port that you, why the port is called that, but you wanna make sure. So if your port is saying file, which it may, um, just due to how it was installed, that is not going to print to your printer. What that is going to do when the port is set as file is it's going to print like a PDF file to your computer. So you're gonna get an error. So just make sure that the print the port is set up to Epson stylus. And then if this, this um, control panel may say install, if it says install, click it. And that will, it just takes like three seconds or something. And you'll have to do that for both the sheet and the roll queue. All right. And once you get that set up, you can click close. And when you set up the queue that way, you will then get this um, settings. Oh, where is it? You will then get a settings, um, here it is, <laughs> printer status and settings option at the top. You definitely wanna go through this before your first print because this is where you can print a nozzle check, a head clean, a power clean, and um, there's one other option down here for the waste pad, okay? So my suggestion is that you print a nozzle check pattern and a head clean um, at least once, maybe twice before you do your first print, all right? And then again, you can close out of that. Now, once you're down here in the queue, you wanna make sure that you have the correct um, size of paper. So if you have a Prestige A3 Plus and you're printing on uh, 13 by nine, select that. If you're printing on a smaller A4 paper, you, you wanna click the Prestige. So there are various options here. You can see there's 13 by nine up here, but you wanna pick the one that's 13 by nine down here. These are slightly off a little bit because they have, they account for the different margins and whatnot. So make sure you're sticking with prestige. Okay. And then same thing um, over here. This here is the um, essentially your um, color profile. All right. So you want to make sure that the color profile that you are picking is prestige DTF. Okay, so you can see there's a whole bunch here, um, but you either wanna use Prestige DTF or Prestige DTF raster. So if you wanna rasterize your image, which will put little holes in it, um, that sometimes allows like a, a thick image or a, a large solid image. It'll allow it to kind of breathe a little bit on the shirt, but you will get small teeny holes. It doesn't look like mesh, but it has that similar type effect. Um, so you wanna pick one, one of these. I'm gonna keep mine as DTF, Prestige DTF, has to do with the ink um, the, and how you're setting that up. So these options can be changed based on um, your the job that you're working on, but as a default, this is what um, you want to set up. Now, you also have one other option here. It, this is layout. So you can either manually lay out your um, designs that are in the queue. You can tell it that by the automatic option that you want is just to print the individual page 
Or if you have multiple items in the queue, you can tell that you want to automatically nest. And that will basically put everything that's in the queue that will fit on a single page, it will automatically nest them for you. So if you have, you know, four or five designs, all of which are, you know, five by two and they're small, it'll put them all on essentially like a gang sheet. All right, so that's where I'm going to keep mine. And then again, you have for your page, and then once you have a job in the queue, you'll get another option. So, all right, so now let's talk about how to import the file that you want to print. So as you can see, I already have it in here, but I'll show you again. We're just going to go to File, Import File, and then we're going to find the file that we want. So I know that this one that's called number seven is actually called Good Vibes Only. Um, a PNGs are ideal. So um, just import the file and it'll say pending until, uh, well, you'll get the preview there, okay? So here is the preview. Now, what you can see as kind of what I was talking about before, if you wanna auto nest, um, that setting is there. So we set the original queue up for the larger size sheet. So we do need to make sure that we adjust that um, in the page. Okay. You don't, if you change it on the queue, it's going to change it as like a default. So in this case, I'm just going to change it, um, as the, uh, for the page and we'll click prestige a four. Okay. We don't want to nest everything. We're just going to, you know, we're just going to send this one to print. Okay. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going, whoops. If you look at what is selected, that is what is going to print. So I'm actually gonna print this one right here, okay? And I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click print. Now the other option that you have is to go up here and click print here, it's the same thing. Okay, so we'll click print and the printing will begin. Okay, so when the printing is done, the transfer will be here on the tray. Now what you're seeing, this white, is the white that's uh, printed on the back of all of them. When you lift it up is where you'll have your design. So this, or this transfer, so if I turn it around, you'll see the white. Now just be careful right now, it's not completely dry, so you wanna let it dry um, just for a, a few minutes. You don't wanna touch it or anything. Now, this is just the first step. All right, now you wanna do this next step within a, within a couple minutes of your transfer printing because the ink is still wet, which is what you need in order for the powder to um, stick to it. So you're just gonna place the transfer in there and kind of get it all over, get the ink all over it, okay? And as you can see, it really doesn't use very much at all. You can kind of use the paper to scoop the, the powder and transfer it all over the full design and then just tap off the rest of the powder. Now, it's going to look what it should look like. It's kind of hard to see, but you have now, um, you're not, this is what's going to act as the adhesive, okay? So from here, you are now going to cure this in your curing oven. Okay, so once you have that powder on your transfer, now it's time to cure. So you've got everything set up. There's a little dial on the side of the filter that you wanna press and turn so that it starts, you hear it running, okay? All right, then you're just gonna take that transfer and place it in the front of, uh, in that front tray. And you wanna make sure that the powder side is facing up, okay? So be really careful and then press start, and that will begin the countdown. So 60 seconds, this is going to cure, and when it comes out, it is going to have like kind of like a shiny um, orange peel look to it. That is all of that powder melting, um, and that is what is going to ultimately become the adhesive uh, once we put it on the heat press. Okay, so that indicates that the timer is done, the time is up, you just press start and that'll stop it. We can carefully remove this from the oven. Okay. And if you can see, this is now ready for us to press onto a shirt. So 
We are then, we, our final step is to add this transfer to a shirt. So what you can see is here's the front side. So once we press it, we will peel off the clear transfer and, or clear transfer sheet and the transfer, the DTF transfer will be left on the shirt. All right, so the final step is to take that transfer and put it onto your shirt. So I have cut down my transfer sheet. My shirt is ready. My heat press is up to 325 for 15 seconds. Um, and depending, know what kind of transfer you have because this transfer, DTF transfer, could be hot or cold peel. So you just wanna make sure that you know what you have. You also wanna make sure that you have enough pressure. I, now this is just a test shirt, so we're just, a, I'm not really paying attention to where I'm applying it. Um, I'm just doing this so that we can see and we're just gonna place it right down there and firm pressure for 15 seconds. This one needs to cool slightly before we can peel off that transfer. And then we will want to press it one more time to get it really firmly into the fibers of the shirt. Okay, so here's this. Now you can see if I try to peel this right now, it wants to bring the transfer with me. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay. And then I am going to place a transfer sheet right over top, a protective transfer sheet, and press again. For another couple seconds. I didn't even set the timer on it because it just doesn't need to be too long. Okay. And there we go. So this is how it comes out. I'll give you a close up so you can see how the quality of how close it is into the fibers of the shirt. You really can't feel it. And then we'll do a couple wash tests so we see how this turns out when it goes through the washer uh, and the dryer a couple times.